people mainly think of Jefferson in relationship to Mariah Causeway uh, when he's in France. But Angelica Church was another married woman with whom he flirted and had a sort of highly charged relationship. And in 1793, he writes to her at the end of his tenure as Secretary of State in Washington's cabinet. He's been sort of beaten up by Alexander Hamilton, um, Angelica's uh, brother-in-law who you know, he had sort of in competition with Hamilton for the favor of George Washington. Um, he, Hamilton wins this battle and Jefferson is going home. And he writes to her and says, now he doesn't mention the sort of wars with Hamilton, but he knows but she that knew all she knew all about, about this first. stuff because they were very, very close. Right. Um, so he writes to her and says, you know, I'm going back to Monticello. And one of the lines is he talks about having to go home to his fields and his farm and his books and to, you know, to watch for the happiness of those who labor for mine, in other words, the enslaved people on his plantation, you know, he talks about his daughters and he says, if they come live ne next to me and they're married off and do well, then I will be the most blessed of the, of, of the patriarchs. And he, I will count myself as blessed as the most blessed of the patriarchs. And as Peter said, mm -hmm. that's sort of a strange word to use uh, to describe a person who saw himself as a Republican with a small r, you know, Democratic Republican, uh, a champion of the common man, a person who believed in the power of people, of the people, of the common people. Um, a patriarch is an autocrat. A patriarch is someone who rules over his domain, his family, sometimes enslaved people. You think about ancient times. In another letter, he describes himself as living like an antediluvian patriarch among his you know, farm and his family and so forth. So what we wanted to do is to think how can these things exist together? Now we see this as a, con as a contradiction, but it made sense to Jefferson. Well, it's much more than a contradiction. Think of Jefferson's association with rights. He's the president who defines the rights. He's the one who articulates natural rights. Well, one of the rights that seems most natural to him is to have complete control over his domestic domain. If anybody else is exercising influence in his household economy and the little society of his mountaintop plantation, then he's, his control would be subverted, his dominion would be subverted. And if he is not secure in his dominion, then he can't be truly independent. That word independence is re resonant both for the country as a whole and for Thomas Jefferson and other American men. They're independent so that they can form a government based on consent with each other. We make the further move that the people in the family should be equal too. And that's what he says all men, and he means including women, are equal in some fundamental human sense, but the family unit itself is natural.